What is going on everybody? Welcome back to MTech. Today we're going to dig into our beloved S52 engine of 255,000 miles and we're going to see what the problem is. Is it a head gasket? Is it a valve issue? Is it a piston ring that's causing our misfire? We're going to leak down test it, do some other tests, we'll find out today. Let's get started. So giving you guys a brief recap of last week, if you missed that video, we did a compression test on this engine and cylinders one, two, and three read about 180 PSI. Cylinders four read about 95, 100 ish, five read 110, six read a little over 170. This would indicate a large problem. If we only had a three cylinder engine, we'd have amazing compression right now. Unfortunately, we have four, five, and six to worry about. So we already did that test which is kind of the initial like, oh shoot, we have an issue test. Next, we have two other tests we're gonna do. Firstly, we're gonna do a leak down test. I hear leak down tests thrown around a lot and I didn't really know exactly what it meant until recently I did some research. In short, a leak down test is the opposite of a compression test, if you don't know. So instead of trying to see, cranking the engine and seeing how much air the engine can hold, or how much PSI each cylinder can hold, we are going to push PSI through it and see when the engine is at bottom dead center in that cylinder, how much air leaks out, hence the name leak down test. And depending on where that air comes out, it will tell us where our issue is. So think of a compression test, more of your engine health test and the leak down more of the further test to determine what the problem is. It's more specific. And then the second test we're going to do is going to be with this. This is a boroscope. This is going to allow us to look into the cylinders and inspect the top of the pistons. The reason I wanted to use this was to make sure that there wasn't any like valve indentations or anything like that on top of the cylinders that can indicate slip timing or bent valve or anything like that. And what this will also do is kind of allow us to see what the top of the pistons look like. It's very possible that we can have say a bad head gasket, but if the top of the pistons look terrible, we might need an engine anyway. It may not have been an issue now, but it'll be an issue in the very near future. And we would just be prolonging that inevitability. So now that we've showed you what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and get into the test. We already have the plugs pulled out and hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, there are no really bad things we find. So we just ran into a hiccup. I was trying to set up the leak down test and I realized that the cylinder has to be at bottom dead center, which wasn't a problem, I was using a screwdriver to check whether or not it was at bottom dead center or not, all was going well. And the problem I ran into is to actually turn the crank, uh, for one, the clutch fan has to be out of the way, and two, you need a 30 millimeter socket. Uh, I left the clutch fan at the house that I just moved into, not here with the car, like I probably should have, and I do not have a 30 millimeter socket. So uh, normally I would postpone this and do it a different day, but I've been kind of checking all of the cylinders and looking, and I think cylinders three and four are either close to the bottom dead center or they're there because in cylinders one and two, the screwdriver kind of sticks out and then in five and six and three and four it doesn't. Four was our most problematic cylinder. So I hooked up the leak down test gauge to cylinder three and if we connect it real quick and stick our gauge on here, you can see we have it up at like 80 PSI and only like 10 to 15 is leaking out. So as I was just saying, before we got interrupted by our cheap air compressor, we just put like 80 to 90 PSI on cylinder three and only like 15 of it was leaking out. So it's not perfect. And for all I know, cylinder three could just be leaking out anyway. But I think it's safe to say that it's holding enough PSI for the sake of this test. We already did the compression test, so we're not really concerned about the actual number it's reading. We're more concerned about the where we can hear the air coming out. So if we put it into four, we hear a bunch of air coming out, I'm gonna try to listen to see if I can hear that. When I was doing the compression test, and I was cranking it over on cylinders four and five, I heard like a whooshing from the adjacent cylinder. So I'm wondering if maybe the head gasket has broken between cylinders four and five and they're getting like cross combustion. That's my biggest running theory right now. So hopefully this will shed some light on whether that's true or not.
I want to do that again. No shot. Unplug it. Okay. Can I do it one-handed? Unplugged. There's air coming out of the exhaust. There's air coming out of the exhaust? Wait. That would be that would be where it's getting out. So that would be exhaust valves, which would mean either it's not sealed up well enough, like it's not at bottom dead center, so it's not sealed, or I have a bent exhaust valve. So now let's put it in three, and if we hear it from there still then this test was a bust. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Is it just a push on? Oh shit. Something like that, yeah. Two, three. That you gotta like like hold like hold it back and then Yep. Okay, hold on. I can do this. It's a very awkward angle for some reason. Ready? Yep. Okay. I don't hear it from three. I don't hear it from the exhaust. Can we take it off? Hang on. It is leaking out somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, hang on. So no, it might not be at bottom dead center, but since I heard it from the exhaust on cylinder four, something's going on with the top end of this engine. Because I, I shouldn't hear it from the exhaust when I'm... Okay. Tree. Yeah. Gotta be an tree. Okay, this is actually really good news. It shouldn't be, but it's very good news. <laughs> Comment down below if you should put an LS in this car. No, shut up. LS swap. No, don't don't feed into his his crazy LS swap idea. Did you hear any other leaks? Did you hear? No, it, I didn't. I didn't hear it in there, and I didn't hear from the coolant. Okay. So that it's not piston rings. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And Sorry, put on your it's not head gasket at least in the cooling system, which I knew anyway, because I did, wasn't like, I was losing tiny amounts of coolant, but like like hardly any. I had to bleed it like every other month. Okay, we got our boroscope. Look, you can see yourself. <laughs> All right, not fooling around. We're almost losing, our, our nine volt battery is almost dead and we don't have more. <laughs> so we're gonna stick it in four and we're gonna take a look-see. Um, why is it not, why can I not? It's super blurry for some reason. Hang on. Oh, because there's sh stuff in it. Let's solve that little problem. We need a clean camera for a clean camera angle for clean viewing of our hopefully clean pistons. Where to live by. This whole video is turning into a shit post. <laughs> by Sonny Morasso. <laughs> this is actually a very serious matter. This is, we shouldn't you want be. To say something to the people? We shouldn't be laughing right now. This is that. This is this is life or death right here. This is the life of an S fifty two that we're that we're joking about. Get in the hole. Oh, that's a lot better. Okay, come over here. Ooh, that's cylinder four. Um. Oh, that's a good view actually. So a little bit of corrosion, but I don't see any valve indentations that are like obvious. So I guess that looks okay. Um, let's stick it in five now. And while we're here, we'll just check all of them. If I could find the... Oh, no, I was totally just like kind of touching the piston. Nice. <laughs> so very oily on five, but also looks okay, I think. Can I get in? There we go. Oh, can I see the cylinder walls there? Or is, what is that on the left? Is that the spark plug hole? No. Oh, there's a cylinder wall. So that looks really good, actually. Um, I don't know what the sides I'm looking at here is. Sure. Two. Same thing as 
five. Looks oily, but otherwise actually looks pretty good. Let's go to one. Okay. Um, a little bit of corrosion or marking, but otherwise I don't really see too much, I think. Can't really see the cylinder wall that well. I'm guessing they look fine. So we're gonna test three, but I think it's safe to say that we don't have any issues as far as timing goes or valves meeting. I did send the photos to TC Euro. I was a little concerned about cylinder one and the, it looked like a valve mark, but I, I guess S52 pistons have a bit of valve clearance in them. So there's no issue there. By the way, big shout out to TC Euro. Uh, they lent us this gauge and they've, they've been very, very helpful and helping me with this issue. They are the, the saviors of the BMW world. You should go check them out. I'll link their store in the, in the description. Really cool guys. Now, let's get the bar scope and just three. Ring camera over here. They don't want to look at me. They want to look at the engine. Oh, I think that looks pretty good. I think you can see my reflection in that. All right, I think we're good with that. Oh, dude, look at this. Hold on. It looks like an old, like an old video. Look, it's like a, like a promotional video from the 2000s. Dine-in intake by Dine-in. Carbon fiber. I actually can't even see the dine logo. Wait. Hey, look at that. So I think given these test results, I would say it's safe to say that we have some kind of top end issue, exhaust valve, uh, probably maybe a head gasket. It's hard to say on that part. Um, this engine has been overheated a couple of times, not recently, but historically. And I mean, it is a 255,000 mile engine. Sometimes things just happen. So now here comes the big question. And that is, do I swap in a lower mileage engine or do I fix the one that's in there now? I think I'm inclined to fix the one that's in there now. And there's a couple of reasons for this. Namely, it's easier and I, I don't have to go find an engine. I think that would be the biggest positive is not having to find an engine. And I'm fairly confident that the bottom end on this engine is stout. The, all the oil analysis results I've been getting are pretty good. And it's not super carboned up in there. The inside of the engine is actually really clean. I think if I fix the top end issue, I could reasonably believe that the bottom end will stay intact. But on the other side of the coin, by doing that, we'd be relying on a 255,000 mile bottom end. The older alternative is we swap in a good used engine. Wouldn't give us the chance to do any OEM plus upgrades to the head, which I do want to do at some point. But by grabbing a lower mileage engine, we're kind of prolonging the time before we have to actually do a full rebuild. And kind of, I'd say like, a, I try to find something at least half the miles on us, like 125,000 miles or less. Only problem is, then I'm now relying on the condition of a used engine. And frankly, these are all 25 plus year old engines. That's a little bit, also a little bit of a tall task. Because most of the time when you have a good car with a good engine, you're not pulling it out. So that's my, that's my dilemma. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. What do you think? Head job, do some OEM plus upgrades, or should we just go find an engine? I think what you guys want to see is going to definitely affect how this gets done because I'm gonna film all of it. So whatever you guys wanna see in the channel is, it also matters to me. One last thing before we go, I'm starting a GoFundMe for this high mileage M3. Someone suggested it in the comments last week. Do not donate if you don't have the money to donate, please. But all the money that we get on the GoFundMe, if any, is going to go right into this car and if there is any leftover, it's going to go into other things for this car or for YouTube videos exclusively. Our goal is four grand. That will be roughly either the cost of a very comprehensive head job with timing, or it will be the cost of a replacement engine and like all the seals and parts around it when we're done. So I think that's a pretty safe number. That said, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. Unfortunately, this might be the last to see of this car for a little while. We're gonna kind of start gathering parts and I wanna hear, hear what you guys say in the, the comments about what you wanna see for this engine. It'll be interesting. First, first uh, big project. Cool, what do you think? Toyota, Corolla, 
and phones from Motorola. <laughs> Dude, what is that? It's just regular car reviews. Shout out to regular car reviews. Shout out to regular car reviews. Man, we're just YouTube chip busters now. Dude, I don't know what to say. Um, I love you. I love you too, Dad. Nice.